Kenyan's fear state is reversing hard-fought freedoms. By Kipchambasam. When Kenyans strongly endorsed the new constitution in August 2010, they thought they had finally done away with the excesses that had been the hallmark of the executive since independence. With the constitution's robust checks and balances, Kenyans thought scenes of police unleashing violence on university students or academics and political dissenters being restricted from traveling abroad were behind them. They thought there would be no more meddling with independent state institutions, such as the judiciary, by state house, a practice which was routine during the Kenya regimes of President Jomo Kenyatta and his successor Daniel Arab Mwa. However, this week, Kenyans witnessed a return of these old practices in what is being termed a gradual but accelerated erosion of the democratic gains made over the decades through sweat and blood. We are already there, in the dark ages once again, said lawyer Jitabu Imaniara who supported President Uriu Kenyatta during the August 8 polls but who feels that he is taking the country in the wrong direction. New Constitution the current leadership opposed the new constitution in the first place. They felt their predicaments at the ICC, International Criminal Court, were brought about by the new laws and they set out to dismantle them, said Mr. Emaniara. President Waikabaki, who promulgated the new constitution, had less than two years to implement it, and the promise of the new laws was supposed to come to fruition under President Uriu Kenyatta who came to power in 2013. However. Under his leadership, there have been many attempts to change laws, some successful, some not. Reid, cracked down on state critics raises eyebrows. In 2015, Parliament amended the Judicial Service Act which required the Judicial Service Commission, JSC, to forward only one name to the President for appointment as Chief Justice. The plot to have JSC submit three names to the President for consideration, thus giving the head of state more leeway in appointing a CJC to be friendlier to the regime, was only defeated in the courts. Early last year, President Kenyatta acquired powers to hire and fire top police chiefs through a miscellaneous amendment that removed the role of Parliament and reduced that of the National Police Service Commission in vetting and hiring them. Furthermore, Attempts have been made by the party to will down the powers of the Auditor General Edward Yuko whom the government accuses of working for the opposition. Jubilee Priorities In fact, last month the leader of majority in Parliament, Garissa Town MP Aidan Duell, said Mr. Ruko's removal alongside that of National Land Commission Chairman Mohamed Swazuri, are Jubilee's priorities in their second term. There are two key areas that define the new constitution that dispersal of executive powers through devolution and the creation of new or strengthening of independent institutions to check on the executive. Read, Uko accuses Parliament of plotting to oust him. Whereas the promise of the new constitution has been realized in certain areas, such as devolution, the country has witnessed an increased effort by the state to curtail the work of, or entirely do away with, some of the independent offices. Following the annulment of the August 8, 2017 presidential poll, Jubilee Party has been on the warpath with the judiciary, especially the Supreme Court, which it accuses of having stolen their victory. In an uncharacteristically coarse language, President Kenyatta and his deputy William Ruto promised to deal with the Waha era, fraudsters, the four Supreme Court judges who voted in favor of annulling their victory. Jubilee Onslaught the culminations of Jubilee's sustained onslaught on the court is a bill that was tabled in Parliament this week which seeks to clip the powers of the judiciary and make it almost impossible for the Supreme Court to overturn future election results. While President Kenyatta has defended the bill saying it was necessary in order to prevent the court from reaching a similar decision on flimsy grounds, critics see a sinister ploy to undermine the institution. The National Super Alliance NASA, presidential candidate, Rayla Odingham, has termed the proposed amendments an act of extreme provocation and an attempt to change goalposts ahead of the repeat election on October 26. However, Senate Deputy Speaker and Therakonithi County Senator Kaithra Kindiki said the amendments are necessary to close gaps identified by the Supreme Court. It is about curing illegalities and voiding a case where individuals sabotage an election. 
the question of undoing gains does not arise, it is misleading, he said. Desired Amendments Jubilee managed to push through their desired amendments through their numerical strength in Parliament. They changed parliamentary standing orders that require a bill to be published within 14 days after tabling, to only one. Babu Owino Mbakazi East MP Paul Angeli alias Babu Owino at Milamani Law Courts on September 27, 2017 He was released on a bond of KSH 500,000 with two sureties of KSH 1 million but was shortly thereafter re-arrested. Photo, Evans Hubble, Nation Media Group. Outspoken Nagio Marakwit County Senator Kip Chumbimur Common said fears that the old habits and practices of Kanyu are coming under President Kenyatta's rule are unfounded. The very people who brag that they fought for our constitution are now its greatest danger, said Mr. Murkaman, who is also the Senate Majority Leader. Read, Yuru, we'll avoid mistakes if we change laws. Read, Jubilee MPs plan all-out war on judiciary. Criticize that first as doomed to fail, the dissolution of small parties to form Jubilee Party has, in hindsight, proved a master stroke. The party now has an overwhelming majority in the Senate and the National Assembly which allows it to pass laws as they wish without the need for bipartisan considerations. This consolidation of power by the ruling party has blurred the line between the ruling party and the state. Still seething from his annulled victory, President Kenyatta told a meeting of Jubilee supporters from Ukambani who paid him a courtesy call at State House on September 11, that the party would use its parliamentary strength to impeach Mr. Odinga if he wins the repeat poll. Two-thirds majority In the National Assembly, with more than 200 members we are 13 members shy of a two-thirds majority, meaning we can change the constitution. Even if he is elected we have the opportunity in Parliament within two, two, three months to impeach him," he said. Interestingly in mid-October, last year, top Jubilee officials drawn from the 47 counties visited the Communist Party of China on a month-long training on how to run and manage a party for 100 years without collapsing. One cannot miss the subtle implications of this trip. For nearly a century now, the Communist Party has controlled every facet of life in China. To be expelled from the party means an end to one's political or even professional career. Anti-riot policemen arrest a University of Nairobi student after protests. Anti-riot policemen arrest a University of Nairobi student after protests against the detention of ODM legislator Paul Angeli's Babu Owino, in Nairobi, Kenya, on September 28, 2017. Photo, courtesy. During the eras of President Jomo Kenyatta and Daniel Arab Mwa, State House nearly became party headquarters complete with parliamentary group meetings and other party caucuses chanting of party slogans and wearing of party colors. President Kabaki embraced it half-heartedly, but the practice has now returned in all its former glory under President Kenyatta who has been hosting huge delegations. Professor Petunj, who teaches history at Mwai University, says, Residential absolutism is the cancer in our body politic and it has the tendency to reproduce itself like biological organisms. He says the founding president and his successor, Mwa, fortified the presidency, with the letter going further to co-op Kanyu into the statecraft and at some point the party was really the government. Political Aristocracy Further attempts at democratization since then have fallen prey to a class of political aristocracy which came up with ethnic parties, he said. A group of Jubilee MPs and party officials have indeed encouraged President Kenyatta to be a benevolent dictator, just like Rwanda's Paul Kagame. Kiharu MP Ndindin Euro and Jubilee Party Vice Chairman David Murath have openly called on the president to adopt this posture. However, former Sabuki MP Koyagi Wawamir, who was detained and finally exiled for a long period for his fight against the one-party rule of President Kenyatta Sr. and his successor President Mwa condemned the proposal by the two Jubilee leaders. The reason Kenyans fought against colonialists was to get independence and the reason we fought for the second liberation was to have democracy, he said. The way we cannot afford to lose our independence is the same way we should not agree to lose our democratic gains, he said.
Ironically, Mr. Nero represents a constituency that was once represented by Second Liberation icon Kenneth Matiba whose valiant fight for multipartyism in 1991 earned him a period in detention during which he developed health complications from which he has never recovered. The arrest of Mbakazi East MP Babu Owino, NASA, twice this week also points to intimidation by the state of opposition figures. Subversion Mr. Owino was first arrested on Monday and charged on Tuesday with subversion after uttering words seemed to demean the president and his mother during a political rally in Nairobi last week. Although the court released him on bail on Wednesday in connection with the first charge, Police officers passed on him outside the courts, held him overnight and charged him the next day with assaulting a man during campaigns for the August polls. Arbitrary arrests have become the order of the day with right to fair hearing disregarded, said Siaia County Senator James Orengo, who was also one of Mr. Rowano's lawyers. Mr. Rowano's arrest sparked pockets of riots by students of the University of Nairobi where Mr. Rowano was a long-serving chairman of the Students' Union. The protests attracted a harsh crackdown by the police evidence by videos that were secretly taped of police officers clobbering students in their lecture halls. Democratic Struggle Historically, university students have been part and parcel of Kenya's democratic struggle and Wednesday's police assault on that students brought back memories of Moa's harsh crackdown on radical university students. Efforts to reach the inspector general for a comment on what action he has taken against the officers were fruitless as he did not return our calls. Dr. Wandi Njoya, a Daystar University lecturer attributed the return of autocratic tendencies to what she called low immunity occasioned by a distressed economy and a bitterly contested election. We have not completely recovered from our pre-2010 condition, she said, alluding to the period before the passing of the new laws. The remnant germs of oppression are now thriving because of our low immunity, she said. On Thursday, NASA deputy presidential candidate Collins Musioka and Bungoma County Senator Moses Wetangula claimed that attempts had been made to bar them from traveling to Uganda for a graduation ceremony.